And I say this, I think every show, each week he gets a little bit worse than the week before. <laughs> Kerry tonight will challenge for the World Heavyweight Challenge, and his challenge is coming up. I liked when uh, when there was a, uh, I think it was like a back elbow, and he called it a, a knee. That happened. Yeah. <laughs> Just confusing basic. That's kinder- not a knee. <laughs> kindergarten anatomy, yes. yes. I liked the, uh, when Kevin, he said he was working on a particular body part. That body part? The leg. Yes. <laughs> So it's Ric Flair versus Kat Carey Von Eric. David Manning is the main referee. I do gotta say one thing mm-hmm. that I actually noticed in the first Flair Carey highlight clip that they showed. And that is it. The the vast majority of my memories of Carey Von Eric are when he was a Texas tornado, when he was mm-hmm. in the WWF. Same. And uh, man, this bro was juiced to the gills. Mm-hmm. He was gig- fucking gigantic when he was in, in WWF. And I mean he was juiced to the gills here as well. I mean, I think I think his dad got him on the juice when he was like in tenth grade or something like that. It was very very early on, but he was also skinny. Like, I shouldn't say skinny, but I mean, I guess I could say you know by by Kerry Von Eric Texas Tornado WWF standards, he was fucking skinny. Like he was he almost had a, a Kevin physique. He was just more muscular, but he wasn't nearly as as gigantically big and thick. As uh, as he was when he when he went to WWF, and it was it was very interesting to see a skinnier, ripped version of of Kerry Von Erich, which he was in both of these matches. So it's a uh, Flair and Kerry. David Manning is the main ref. Michael Hayes, the fan voted special referee. Boy, was he late to this ring. They did re- full of intros for both guys and. We're all just standing around, and suddenly Michael Hayes is just in the ring in jeans and no shirt. Yeah, it's funny because like. So Kerry's got this big robe on, basically a bathrobe, and Flair's got his big robe on, and you know the referee's wearing his referee shirt and his pants, and all of a sudden Michael Hayes fucking walks in in his jeans with no t-shirt and his hairy chest hanging out, and I was like, this is lewd. <laughs> this guy, what the fuck is this guy doing with no clothes on? It's Michael Hayes. And of course, you know everyone else takes off their robes and they're in their wrestling gear, but I don't know what it was. It was the hairy chest and the. You know, he just was like, it was weird. He wasn't wearing enough clothes for his refereeing gig. Well, Hayes explains that uh, he is there to uh, be an impartial official. He wants to make sure nobody gets in or out of this cage. Therefore, he brought his brother, Terry Gordy, to guard the door. And everyone cheers. So I thought this match, just as a match, was pretty goddamn great. It was was a pretty damn good match. It was very simple. Flair would chop the piss out of Kerry for a while. Eventually, Kerry would fire back and go for a abdominal stretch or a sleep hold or the claw or whatever submission Goddamn hold. Goddamn sleep hold. Whatever submission hold he wanted to try that time. So it's a, a fun contrast of styles. That, that's really it. They just repeated that formula over and over again. Uh, there was one point where Kerry tried the jankiest top rope knee drop I ever saw. Oh. He goes to the top rope, and I don't mean the top turnbuckle or the <laughs> corner. He's in the middle of the rope staying against the cage, and these ropes are loose. And he's weebling, and he's wobbling, and he jumps, but he also slips at the same time. And Ric Flair is a much braver man than I, because I, by the time Kerry landed, would have been on my feet over the cage out the door. That man was not landing anywhere near my head. But Flair laid there. and I actually don't think he got near his head, but Flair did such a great job selling it that yeah. you, you bought it. I certainly hope so. Yeah. Well, yeah, that was, that was very scary. Uh, the other thing is that there's two refs in there, and in theory, at least I thought the idea was... Hayes is only there to, uh, if, he, if if David Manning tells Michael Hayes to stop him from doing illegal things, then he should interfere or break them up. He's but, like the enforcer. Yeah, but Hayes is his own man. He's dropping to count pins. He's getting very physical with guys from the start if they're choking on the ropes or won't break in the corner. He's enforcing the pro wrestling rules here in this cage match. Okay, I would say he's enforcing those rules on a delay. Like the uh, like the other ref is doing his job, and Michael Hayes is so slow on what he's doing. Like the other ref is already down counting, and Michael Hayes realized, "Ooh, wait, I should get down and start counting, or I need to pull this guy off because the other ref is pulling him off." Michael Hayes was horrible as a referee. They could have pulled anyone out of the audience and said, "Hey, can you be referee? Just copy what this other guy is doing." It was on the same par. I have never seen a worse referee. So this just goes, just goes on for a while. I think we got this match uninterrupted. like twenty. Yeah, I don't remember one commercial. 20 or 25 minutes. 
Uh, Michael starts to get more and more agitated, and the and the wrestlers are getting agitated with him. They won't stop cheating. He won't stop putting his hands on them, which is not how it's supposed to work. Everyone's just bickering with each other. And so, eventually, uh, Carrie gets Flair in the claw hold. While this is going on, Hayes is over in the corner having a conversation with Gordy outside the ring. He returns. Which, by the way, I don't know what that was all about. I'm not quite sure either. Yeah. Unless it's set up that they may have had a cutting plan, but it, well, we'll see. So Hayes turns around, and then as Flair is in the claw hold, his foot brushes the rope. In it. David Manning's opinion, this is not enough to break the hold. Okay. <clears throat> Let's talk about this. This fucking guy got his foot on the ropes, okay? I know it touched the ropes and then was no longer on the ropes, but his foot got on the ropes. That's a break, right? Yes. We've seen guys put a finger on the ropes. We've seen guys <laughs> bite the rope for a break. How about if I put you in a figure four and you grab the ropes, but then I drag you back to the middle? Like, he can't do that. Once you touch the ropes, that's a break. And so... Hayes, who's supposed to be a heel, is like, that's a fucking break. And David Manning says, no, that's not a break. And they get in an argument. And, you know, obviously at the end of the day, you know, Michael Hayes, he took matters into his own hands and arguably went too far. But he was not wrong with his, his uh, you know, this was the right call. Michael Hayes made the right call. Okay. At the very beginning of this match, they said it was a cage match, and it was no disqualification. That is that is true. That is true. But we need Lance's uh, thoughts on this as well. <laughs> Why? Because I think we had an argument about this one time. Okay. Where it was like, uh, you know, you're still going to break the hold because you can't have the match finish out of bounds. But what I if forget. he does? What if he doesn't break the hole? He's not going to get disqualified. He's not going to get disqualified. But like, I, I don't know. It's arguable. Hmm. So the refs have been disagreeing for a while now, and here they're. I got to think about this. They're in passionate disagreement about the way to handle this rope touching. Hayes determines it's his job as referee. Ric Flair got the ropes. I must break up this hold. You ever try to break up a Von Erich claw? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it shouldn't be this hard. I disagree. Yes. Apparently, they needed all four Freebirds, including Jimmy Garvin. Bring in Precious and Bad Street at the same time. Get them all in there. Hayes is pulling and pulling and pulling, and those fingers would not come off of Flair's head. Finally, Hayes puts Kerry like any rear naked choke and yanks him backwards. This, of course, pisses Kerry off. So now they're shoving each other back and forth and going at it. And uh, as they're bickering, Flair goes flying into the corner. He just crashes into everybody the door goes flying open Hayes has had enough of Ric Flair's bullshit he shoves David Manning aside he punches Ric Flair in the face and he orders Kerry to make a cover Kerry's not going to make this cover you just punch that guy this is bullshit Hayes grabs Kerry throws him down cover this fucker I've given you a win I want a title for your brother now I'm winning a title for you one of you fucking Von Erichs take the win Hayes won't do it and, or Kerry won't be the pin. Hayes is pissed. He's enough. Fuck this. Fuck you. Fuck Texas. I'm leaving. And he goes to leave the cage. Flair goes flying into the corner again, boxing to Kerry. Kerry sends Hayes flying out the door to the arena floor. This enrages Terry Gordy. So Gordy grabs that steel cage door. And I don't know how many people were in this reunion arena. They claimed 20,000. That's probably a lot, but... Over all those thousands and thousands of people screaming when this door slammed, ka -ching, it made a very, very satisfying noise. Yeah, you know, we've seen this spot in every single fucking cage match in the last 30 years. Every cage match has to have the cage door slammed on someone's head to the point that it's just like, you know, you don't even think about it anymore. But, uh, man, this seemed violent watching it here. I don't know if it was that loud clang or the great bump that Kerry took for it, or uh, I don't know. It was just like, it was very, very well done. And, you know, that uh, fucking Terry Gordy. If, if, if I may. Bitch. If I may. I, uh, I don't know exactly what happened. Of course, I wasn't there. I'm not one of the wrestlers in the match. 
But everything got really weird right after the door slam. You would have think that Terry would have taken a bump or Carrie would have taken a bump and then Flair would have pinned him. Everybody goes home. That didn't happen. They wrestled for another four minutes. Um, every time Flair would uh, make a cover, Carrie would kick out, as Brian said early in the show. There is a there is a shot of Carrie, and he's got. Okay, the the film is very, it's it's not high def, <laughs> to say the least, and it looks like Carrie has a huge, huge bruise on the middle of his forehead. I think that he legit was knocked out, and he was just doing what he thought he should do in the match, but he was out. And that's why everything got cr nutty and, and screwed up at the end. I don't know, but I don't think so. No, because I, I, only I, because if you look at the cage door, they have the latch, the big latch that goes up and down. It goes like this. My sure. dad was a fence builder, which by the way, you know what this is in sign language? It's not good. But anyway, the latch goes like this. And so the latch ends up outside, and so it clangs into the, the deal. Um, and I, I was watching Kerry's head. I don't think his head came anywhere close to that door. I think that he positioned his head in such a way that when they slammed the door, it made an awesome noise, and he took a big bump. I could be wrong, but I think that this was... Because the more I watched it, the more I realized what I thought they were doing, which was, you know, we, we want to make sure that, you know, it's, it's the Freebird's fault in the end. And they kept playing up, the, you know, he might have been concussed and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, it was like you couldn't beat the guy, even with that. And I think they wanted to very much protect him. And mm -hmm. that's why they did the, the referee right. stoppage as opposed yes. to him getting pinned as a result of getting hit with the door. The two yeah. times Kerry got screwed here were when he had his finish on. He had flair in the iron claw when Hayes broke it up to the, to the alleged rope break. And he overcame the case or slam. And was in the end beating Flair's ass. He hit the discus punch, his other he finish. Did. Yes. He did. And then he collapsed. Yeah. So even though he didn't win this match, even though it was stopped because he was he was KO'd, he still beat Flair twice. On uh, in Craig's defense, that door, Gordy swung that thing so hard it actually went past yes. the latch and hit the ring ropes. Because at the end, when Carrie's laying on the ground and they're coming in to help him, they're having trouble opening the door. Because they have to pull it. That's past. possibly got clunked. They have to pull it past the latch to reopen it. Because now it's an inside door instead of an outside door. It looked so hokey when he was when he was winning on Flair at the, after he got the door slammed and in his head. Don't understand how tough the Von Erics are. And and then he hit the discus punch, and that was the that was the time where oh I'm done. That was his. They ran out of gas. I don't know. He had to get. I, I, to I get could have been done. It could have been done a lot better. Wrestling was different in 1982. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.